Nola Gent here at the Lynchburg Cafe. Welcome to Nola Gent. Let the good times roll. The Lynchburg Cafe is on the Lynchburg Town Square, right next to Lynchburg's most famous attraction, the Jack Daniels Distillery, which I was in town to visit. I've been to Lynchburg before, but I've never been to the Lynchburg Cafe because it's a new restaurant. They just opened in March of 2020. I ended up at the Lynchburg Cafe after I had done my whiskey sampling over at the Jack Daniels Distillery, and I had run over in a dash to sample the barbecue caboose restaurant that I've been wanting to try for quite some time. And even though they close at five, and I was a few minutes before five, unfortunately, the barbecue caboose had already shut down. So I was quite happy and relieved to discover that the Lynchburg Cafe stayed open until 6 p.m. So that was quite nice to be able to find a place to eat dinner at. Well, let's head inside. Well, it looks like a nice traditional diner setup with checkered tablecloths and all along with the mandatory Jack Daniels decorations that seem to be in every business in the area. We had three people waiting on us during our dinner here, and we were the only people in the restaurant other than another table that was leaving as we were arriving. So we got extra special VIP service as we were the only customers. So they took fantastic care of us in here, and we really had a fantastic dinner. The staff were really friendly and helpful, and it was a great experience in here. They also were advertising some nice looking desserts, and I was in the mood for a strawberry milkshake, so I decided to go with that, and then it was time to look at the menu. So, for appetizers, we have mozzarella cheese sticks, fried green tomatoes, spicy fried green beans, fried pickles, corn nuggets, onion rings, nacho cheese fries, bacon cheese fries, Salads, cafe salad, cafe salad with chicken, sandwiches, comes with a side of french fries, chicken sandwich, catfish sandwich, classic BLT, grilled cheese sandwich, wraps, chicken wrap, buffalo chicken wrap, burgers, all burgers come with a side of french fries, hamburger, cheeseburger, bacon cheeseburger, double burger, lynch burger, whiskey burger, farm boy, slaw burger, and the Impossible Burger. Then on the other side of the menu, we have baskets, chicken tenders, fried catfish, platters, ribeye steak, hamburger steak, Swiss chicken, grilled chicken breast, grilled pork chop, sides and extras, french fries, curly fries, tater tots, sweet potato fries, baked potato, loaded baked potato, fried okra, fried squash, coleslaw, hush puppies, catfish filet, chicken tender, and kids meals, hamburger, cheeseburger, chicken tender, grilled cheese sandwich, corn dog, milkshakes and ice cream, hand up milkshakes and ice cream, vanilla milkshake, chocolate milkshake, strawberry milkshake, cookies and cream milkshake, scoop of ice cream, and then our beverages of Coke products, sweet or unsweetened tea, lemonade, coffee, and milk. Speaking of milk, I'm ready for my delicious strawberry milkshake. Ooh, this looks delicious. Mmm, nice. Very delicious. I considered getting the ribeye, but in the end I got the hamburger steaks. Try that out. It could have used some gravy, but other than that, it was a perfectly delicious hamburger steak. My dining companion got this delicious grilled cheese and these amazingly delicious french fries. I'm going to borrow a french fry. These are fantastic french fries. They are also blazing burning hot, perfectly crisp. So, so good. I'm burning my mouth a little bit here though, but it's well worth it. Ooh, the hamburger steak smells fantastic with all of the mushrooms and peppers and onions on top. They gave me some A1 to put on top of it, so I'll, uh, since I didn't get any gravy with it, I'll try some A1 instead. Alright, I haven't had A1 in quite a while, but let's chow down on it.
This meat looks and smells fantastic. And it does taste really delicious. The A1 is still pretty uh, good of a compliment to the meat as well. And all of the mushrooms, onions, peppers really complement the flavors as well. So this is a perfect taste combo here. They really use some good quality meat here, you can tell. This is very well done. Now let's get some of these uh, really nice crunchy okra. These are perfectly fried, just so very crisp and delicious looking. Let's do the taste test and ooh, yes, these are perfectly cooked fried okra. My grandmother would be proud of them. This is the way they should be done. Excellent. We will give a little attention back to the hamburger steak now and examples more of that. It is very juicy and delicious there. From the way this hamburger steak is cooked so well, I can also determine automatically the hamburgers here have to just be amazingly fantastic. So at some point in the future, I'd love to try the burgers here. Um, this is really good food here. I can tell that they take a lot of time and effort to cook things properly and use really good quality ingredients here. And these okra, ooh, these are some of the best I've had in quite a long time. Actually, I had originally tried to order their fried squash. Kind of a lucky break that I ended up with the okra instead. Wow, look at the perfect roll marks on this burger. So delicious. I think I could maybe eat about five, six of these, no problem. Uh, I do think they could make a fantastic gravy here though, so the only suggestion I could possibly make is they should try to do a gravy. Not that white gravy stuff that a lot of people uh, use, but a brown gravy. I think as good as everything is, some brown gravy on top of this will just sort of kick it over the edge. They definitely can make an excellent, excellent hamburger steak even better with that. Oh, ho, 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 ho. let's get back to this delicious fried okra. It's like really, if you fry anything, it's usually going to be better, right? That's sort of the uh, miraculous powers of the frying. Uh, you know, I, I'm quite used to boiled okra as well, um, okra and gumbo. Uh, in New Orleans, we often uh, have uh, gumbo creole where it's got uh, tomato and a little shrimp in it. That's a fantastic dish as well. A lot of people don't like okra though because it gets a little slimy uh, when you cook it like that. Whereas opposed to when you fry it, it's all just delicious, crispy, sort of uh, like a snack in a lot of ways. It's more like eating potato chips than anything else where, you know, I can totally get the uh, slime aspect if you're not used to it. Uh, however, I'm used to it in every way you can have it and I like it all. I even like pickled okra. Okay, here's my personal challenge. I'm going to try to eat all of this okra in one bite. The hard part's just getting it all on my fork and making sure it stays on there. I don't know if I could do this. Maybe, maybe. Okay, looks like I've almost got it. And then can I fit it all in my mouth? Let's see. Ooh, could be dangerous. It didn't fall apart. I succeeded. Hit that thumbs up if you uh, really like me accomplishing that. So I am full. I'm not going to be able to take down the Texas toast, but otherwise I clean my plate. So the total bill price with tip for me and my dining companion eating came to $22.54, a fantastic value. So after dinner, pretty much everything was closed in Lynchburg, but I wanted to take one last look at the front of the courthouse as there were some items up there I had not seen before. So this historical placard was in front of the courthouse and this is the first time that I had noticed it. And it says Lynchburg, the heart of Moore County. Lynchburg was a mere crossroads village in 1861, but the war and the years that followed had transformed this place. By the end of April 1861, six weeks before Tennesseans formally voted to secede, local men had formed Company E, Lynchburg Rangers, 1st Tennessee Volunteer Infantry, Provisional, 
Colonel Peter Turney, a secessionist firebrand in neighboring Franklin County, led the regiment. The company's captains were local men, Dr. Ezekiel Y. Salmon, Thomas H. Mann, William P. Tolley, and Owen J. Bailey. Salmon's brick dwelling at 295 Main Street became their meeting place. By May, the Lynchburg Rangers were in Virginia, where they stayed for most of the war as part of the Tennessee Brigade, Army of Northern Virginia. They participated in almost every major battle from Manassas to Antietam to Cold Harbor, including Pickett's Charge and the Battle of Gettysburg. Those who survived and returned to Lynchburg in 1865 found it greatly changed. The Tullahoma Campaign had left many local farms in shambles. In 1863, a landowner had given emancipated slaves, all were free when the war ended, land for the Elm Street Church of Christ. By 1867, post-war recovery was underway. Salmon built a fine Greek Revival addition to his brick dwelling, which became the Grand Central Hotel, later Mary Bobo's boarding house. In 1871, the legislature created Moore County, and Lynchburg became the county seat in 1873. Wartime and Reconstruction traumas faded with improving conditions, personified by local resident Jack Daniels, whose distillery soon produced the Tennessee whiskey now known worldwide. I have two other videos on Lynchburg, one with a tour of the Lynchburg Town Square and one with the Jack Daniels Distillery and there'll be a link to that playlist at the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. And if you would just click on the little circle here with a picture of my head in there and subscribe to the Nolajet channel, it would really help me a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you.